found support from the eh, United Nations, which was very important. And also mundo, the congresses from different parts eh, of the world and few women's organizations eh, and, and organizations of, of, of Afro-descendants. And muy here, the Black Caucus in the U.S., eh, it was a very strong and very quick mobilization and many sectors of civil society asking for liberation. You've also become very controversial in, in your country as a result of your involvement in the peace process or attempts of the negotiations of peace uh, with uh, the FARC. You were involved with President Hugo Chavez in high-profile talks. Uh, what's the state of those talks, especially after the death of some of the key guerrilla leaders uh, in the past year, Manuel Marulanda and Raul Reyes? Uh, uh, where are those talks uh, now, uh, and what's the prospects for peace in Colombia? Because this is obviously the longest-running civil war. Usted está vuelto en, en negociaciones eh, muy controversial eh, con el presidente Hugo Chávez para conseguir la paz entre la FARC y el gobierno colombiano. ¿Qué ha pasado, especialmente después de la muerte de Manuel Marulanda y Raúl Reyes, los líderes guerrilleros? ¿Dónde están eh, es, esas negociaciones o la posibilidad de la paz? Porque esta es la guerra civil más larga en toda América Latina. Well, I think that the first thing that I have to acknowledge is the enormous support that the Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez, and the, the Venezuelan people in general have uh, provided to this peace process in Colombia. And after many years, we've, lost, uh, we've uh, gained the freedom of seven persons with a lot of obstacles, uh, mostly from part of the government and some sectors of public opinion and people who don't want peace in Colombia, who have this war as a business and who which allows them to use enormous amounts of wealth. Right now, the process after the, uh, the killing and the violation of Ecuadorian territory from the part of the Colombian government is, without a doubt, has created a situation very difficult. I think it's uh, uh, what they, these sectors wanted was simply to just thwart the process and put it to a stop to, 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 to avoid the humanitarian liberation of hostages. And I think it's pretty strange that the death of Commander Manuel Marulanda has created a situation of a lot of instability inside the FARC and generally in the country. But I think that there's an important fact, which is that many persons have uh, conquered uh, fear and terror. They are not falling in the trap of keeping the FARC isolated so that people who are hostages of them would die in the jungle, or the persons who have uh, uh, arbitrarily detained in jail just die there. So that there's been a new of new contacts, we are basically very willing to ask for new contacts and to make progress in the liberation of civilians and the humanitarian exchange of prisoners. There's three American citizens that we work with for intensively, and also the possibility that from here to December, through a political agreement with the FARC, we would manage to finish, to end completely with the kidnapping and to end the kidnapping as a weapon of political pressure in the country. Personally, I don't think that there's a possibility of a real peace process with this government because of the mistrust, because of the lack of credibility, and mostly because of the scandals of support of the paramilitaries and of board rigging to reform the constitution. But if we manage to do these three things and to form groups that are important inside the country and with the international community, we will make, be taking the first steps for a peace process in Colombia. In terms of the deaths of, of the guerrillas, uh, recently a Colombian magazine, Semana, reported that when uh, Raul Reyes was killed, that the, uh, the Colombian military retrieved a computer, that there were many emails there, supposedly hundreds of emails that were involved you or, or, or mentioned you. And one of them supposedly claimed that in two, December of 2007, you urged the FARC not to release Ingrid Betancourt, the former senator and presidential candidate who has now been in captivity for about six years uh, of the FARC. Your response to those uh, charges in uh, in Semana. Uh, the, um, eh, en la revista Semana informó recientemente que cuando Raúl Reyes eh, eh, fue matado por, los, por las fuerzas del el, el gobierno colombiano, que ellos encontraron una computadora de él, unos cuantos eh, intercambios, eh, emails donde decían que usted en el 2007 eh, le recomendó a, a la FARC 
que no soltaran a Ingrid Betancourt, que en ese tiempo había sido secuestrada y todavía es, eh, es eh, eh, encarcelada por la FARC. Eh, ¿Su respuesta a ese informe de semana? No, well, no, I think that it's very important that the public opinion in the world knows that it's been a strategy, perverse strategy of the Colombian government. It's the only, the only attempt, the, on, the only criminal activity it has committed, in which uh, despite the bombardment, uh, they found this uh, completely intact computers that were only picked up by the Minister of Defense and the police generals. I personally don't believe that. I think it's completely false. Uh, many of those emails that they mentioned, they haven't seen, haven't been seen except by them and the right-wing press internationally. And I think they are used to, to change the public opinion in the country and also to uh, throw mud and, and, and to the work that many of us are doing. Fortunately, in the times that they say that I was sending those emails, I was in Argentina in the position of president with Ingrid Betancourt's mom, who was two days of very intense work, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet to, with any FARC commander in Argentina. So I think that there's been a, there will be an opportunity to demostrate that that's completely false, that it didn't exist, that it's been a very dirty strategy of the current government. For example, uh, in previous times, they made a number of attacks against the President of the Republic in the times of the electoral campaign, and then it was demonstrated that those uh, attacks have been created by themselves, and I think this is the kind of the same kind of a strategy in the same way because what's really strange is that in countries like Spain or France, uh, Semana Magazine would have access to the emails and ourselves who, who are supposedly the persons who wrote them uh, don't have access to them. So I think all that fits in this strategy of destabilization and especially to throw mud on the opposition in the country. Well, I want to thank you very much for, for being with us, uh, Senator Piedad Cordova of, of, the, of the Colombian Senate, uh, for your, the opportunity to be with you. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros, Senadora Piedad Cordova. Thanks for uh, This is Democracy Now! I'm Juan Gonzalez. Amy Goodman will be broadcasting from Aspen, Colorado tomorrow. That does it for today's program. If you want to get a copy of the show, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. I'm Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us again.